Hi, I'm Dan Johnson, your bidet expert and owner of ManyBidets.com, where we've sold over 10,000 bidets in the past eight years. Today, we're going to talk about how to install the Swash 1400 by Brondell on a standard toilet. It's important to note that almost all of our customers install these on their own without any help from a plumber, assuming they have electricity near the toilet as these run on electricity. But as long as you have that piece of the puzzle taken care of, you can do this on your own nine times out of 10. Let's go ahead and talk about parts that you need and tools that you need to do this installation. Almost everything that you need comes with the unit. It is a good idea to have a crescent wrench on hand to tighten your hose. And it's good to have something to absorb the water when you disconnect the water supply. A towel, a, a sponge, something to absorb that water. There won't be a lot of it, but it's good to have. Let's go ahead and get started with the process. Obviously, we've, re we've removed the, the existing toilet seat, and then we have to turn off the water supply. This is a quarter turn. Uh, you might have one that has a longer turn. Now, if I unscrew this now, we're gonna have water in the tank that's gonna pour out. So for starters, after the water supply is turned off, we'll want to drain the tank. Hold down on the lever until you hear water is no longer flowing. That drains as much water out of the tank as possible. Now, there's still probably going to be a little bit of water that's going to come out of this water supply. So have something readily available to absorb that water, as you see we have done here. And as you can see, because we drained the tank first, there's not that much water, but it's nice to have that there so that we're not getting water on our bathroom floor. The T connector that comes with the Swash 1400 connects on the bottom side of the tank. Also, you want to make sure that the, the rubber O-ring is in there so that you're not getting leaking there. One of the common questions we get is, why did you send me the incorrect T. Nine times out of ten, the reason is because people are trying to connect it to the water inlet instead of connecting it to the bottom side of the toilet tank. So make sure you're connecting it in the right place. Hand tight might do the trick, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of an additional twist here just to tighten it a little bit more. Uh, you don't want to over tighten this but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit on the snug side there. And once that's been done, we can reconnect this water supply line to the bottom of the T. You can use a little bit of plumber's tape if you uh, think necessary, but technically this is designed to be done without plumber's tape. So if you use plumber's tape, use it very sparingly. I would I would recommend trying without plumber's tape for starters, and if you need it, use it. This hose, which comes with the Swash 1400, should also have the rubber on either side. The one end's gonna connect here, and the other end will connect to the bidet seat when we install it. Again, same principle, hand tight might be enough. Definitely don't over tighten, but I'm going to give it a little additional twist here just to ensure tightness and snugness there. Now we're going to install the mounting plate. Uh, this is a pretty standard mounting plate, so it's got rubber on the bottom to help it adhere to the porcelain. And it's got your grooves to connect the seat to the mounting plate. It comes with a couple of plastic washers. Some come with metal washers, but uh, these are pretty sturdy plastic washers. The length of the washer allows you to mount it to different toilets regardless of the bolt spread. So this gives you the ability to bolt it to a toilet that is anywhere from five and a half inches to seven and a half inches 
on the bolt spread. Uh, you can also see that there are little grooves in this mounting plate that allow you to, um, right there on the washer and then here in the mounting plate, that allow you to really tighten this down and keep it in one place. So those grooves can come in handy there. It's one of the things we like about the Swash 1400, really grips well in that respect. Now that we have the mounting plate in place, it's time for us to install the bolt hardware. So for starters, we put the bolt through the top and then we're going to take the cone washer along with the plastic washer and we're gonna stick that on the bottom side of this bolt. After that, we put the nut on And you can see the way that the heads fit into the plastic washer. Uh, there's no need to have any sort of uh, screwdriver or anything else to hold the wash or the, the bolt head in place because the bolt fits into that perfectly. So we're good there. And now we just want to do the same thing on the other side. When you're putting these washers uh, in, you want to make sure the thin portion is pointed up because that is what's going to grab the, uh, the porcelain. So the thin side is up, the wide side is down. Uh, the thin side kind of pushes itself into the porcelain, making for a tighter connection. And you can see this mounting plate we can actually attach without any additional tools. You want to take a look from the top and make sure that you are centered. We are in this scenario. And then get that mounting plate pretty snug. Snug enough that it doesn't move when you slide the seat into it. If you have a skirted toilet, you will need an alternate T connector. So if you have a skirted toilet, you may not have access to this bottom side of the tank, in which case you can buy an alternate T connector from us, connect it to here and run the water supply line from here up to the bidet seat. You also likely won't have access to the bottom side of these bolt holes. So in that scenario, you would need a top mounting kit, which is also something that we can provide that allows you to attach the mounting plate without having access to the bottom side of the bolts. So now we're going to install the seat. You can see that there are grooves in the bottom of the seat that slide into the mounting plate. So let's go ahead and put this flat on the toilet. Line up and push back. You can hear it snap into place. This is already pretty well lined up. If it wasn't, I could loosen the bolts down here at the bottom so that the mounting plate could slide back and forth, line it up, and then tighten those bolts again. But in this scenario, we're in pretty good shape already. So next, we want to connect the water supply to the water inlet. Again, finger tight may do the trick. If you want to give it a little twist with a crescent wrench, feel free. Couple of things to note about the Swash 1400. It is a seat that they offer in both round and elongated, and also both in white and biscuit color. Uh, it's a fairly unique seat in that respect because a lot of seats do not offer a biscuit color. Uh, they also have this little pocket, so a lot of seats have the, uh, the side here flush, but they have a pocket that allows the, the water supply and the host to be kind of hidden. Um, you'll see that on basically any product description you read for the Swash 1400. Not a deal breaker, but it, it is definitely nice to have. And then of course you have these 
uh, these little clips and the clips are designed to help and just give it that finishing touch. So the clips can come on here and help you obviously completely optional but can help you kind of tuck that power cord out of the way a little bit more by connecting it to the water supply. So we've got the water supply connected. Now we need to turn on the water supply. We can hear the tank filling. We want to make sure that it's not leaking anywhere. Uh, so there's a variety of places it might possibly leak right up here, right next to the T connector here on the bottom side of the toilet tank. Any of these places that we've just now tightened could be leaking. If you run into a scenario with leaking, it might be that you have used too much plumber's tape. It might also be that you're missing a rubber O-ring somewhere. So check those sorts of things. Once you've done that, plug it into your electrical outlet and you're set to go. Also remember that you have to be seated on the unit in order for it to operate. So when you do your trial test of the seat, make sure that you're sitting on it with bare skin contact like you would be when you would actually use it or else it's not going to function. Also for the install, it's important to note that the remote should be mounted to the wall. So don't forget to mount that remote with the provided screws. If you want to test the seat without sitting on it, so the seat sensor is built into the seat and you can kind of feel for it. Once you hear the self-cleaning run, you'll know that you're in the right spot. And then you can hit a wash button. And we can see that the wash is now running. Now if I lift my hand, my seat sensor is no longer activated and the nozzle goes back in. But now I know that it operates properly. So if you don't want to sit with bare skin contact on the seat, that's another way that you can test it. Thank you so much for watching our video on how to install the Swash 1400 bidet seat by Brondell today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for additional videos coming up. Don't forget to like the video so that others know that it's worth the watch. And keep in mind that we sell all of these products on our website. Consider purchasing from our family business, ManyBidets.com, to help us continue to offer great content like this and help others for years to come. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. ManyBidets.com, where we sell many bidets, not many bidets.